But you've done it again. You've made it to Friday. I don't know about you, but I like Fridays. Anyway, whatever day it is, it's Friday where you are. Come on in, spend a minute with me. Let's think about something together. You know, Shakespeare is quoted as saying that uh, a rose by any other name would smell as sweet. And I guess that's true. You could call it any name you want to, but that rose is going to smell like a rose no matter what. And that's true. You know, and that's true about us, too. But names are kind of important, aren't they? We think about them a lot. We think about it when we're giving a name to a child. Some cultures, you name them according to what's going on, what you're thinking, what you see. We associate them in different ways. You know, I think about there in John chapter 1, Gospel of John chapter 1, when Andrew went and found his brother, his brother Simon. Said we found the, the Messiah, the Christ. Encouraged him to come and see Jesus. When Jesus saw him, he said to him in verse 42 of John chapter 1, You are Simon, the son of John or Jonah. You shall be called Cephas, or we commonly think of the Latin derivation, Peter. You shall be called a rock. Of course, it was much later that uh, this Simon that we commonly call Simon Peter, or just Peter, would say to Jesus, you're the Christ, the Son of the living God. But Jesus played on that name just a little bit when he said, upon that rock. Yeah, talking to Peter. Upon that rock, I will build my church. What a play on words. He was the Christ. But yet his mother had been told to name him Jesus. Because it means... God saves, for he will save his people. Names tell something. They're important. We not, may not be of those cultures that we think so much about names in terms of meaning so much, but some still do, I think. Quite often we name children of family names. That's kind of how I got it. Great uncle, cousin, all named Russell. But actually, it was a very dear friend of my father, O.J. Russell. I've told that so many times. O.J. Russell, that my mother wanted me to be named Russell. Anyway, we put names on children because we associate them with things that are valuable, important. We give them names of seasons of the year. We give them names like the months of the year. We name them after flowers. We give them names that we think are strong when we want them to be strong. We give them names that are delicate when we think of how we want their lives to be. Names are important. They have value to us. Think about Jesus. He lived up to that name, didn't he? He came. He saved us. He was the power of God to save us. We can think of other names of people, but I was thinking about Peter. What a powerful guy he became. What an influential man he became. People looked up to Peter. People drew upon Peter. People, people listened to what Peter had to say. I think about how he stood up amidst a crowd. Here, this simple fisherman stood up amidst a crowd and proclaimed the great message or even later stood before the learned council of his own country and didn't bat an eye. Peter the Rock. He was strong. He lived up to his name. Others have done the same along the way. Sometimes we name people for people like that. We name our sons for people that were important. We name our daughters for people that are important. We keep a memory alive. I guess what I'm saying to you today is Maybe your name came by ease. Maybe it's just because somebody liked the sound of it. If it's the sound of beauty, live beauty. If it's the sound of strength, live strength. If it's the sound of a very special person, embody the best qualities you know in that person. 
You know, Jesus hadn't referred to Simon as Cephas or Peter. We can only wonder what kind of guy he really would have been. He could have been just simply Simon the fisherman, the brother of Andrew, who worked along with a couple of fellows named James and John. You know them, they were big and powerful. We heard their messages, they preached to the Christ. But you know what? We hear a whole lot of a fellow named Peter. There's value in a name. Yes, that rose might smell just as sweet if we called it ragweed or dandelion or whatever. But you know, we associate a rose as something of beauty. That wasn't taken into account in Romeo and Juliet. And we understand, but I just want you to know, grab hold of the name. And if you can't find any other, just grab hold of the name Christian or Christ. Be like Paul. For me to live is, you know the rest of it. Hey, I'm glad you spent a few moments with me on this Friday. It's a good time to recognize the value of the name and enjoy it. Hey, we'll share some more things in the days ahead. Lord willing. Glad you're with me today. Thank you.